Have you ever wondered what some iconic characters would sound like with different voices? Haven't you seen a Scottish beast live in a can? Well, I'll trade me kilt for a good cell phone like this any day. <laughs> Sports are cool. Frank, my dear, I don't give a damn. Heck no, I'm your uncle brother. Those just did not sound right. I mean, character voice matters. Today, I want to talk about arguably one of the greatest narrations of a piece of literature that I have ever heard. And I admittedly, I haven't heard every single audiobook narrator out there, but this one for me stands above a lot of the others. Now, I know there's a huge debate about whether audiobooks versus books, whether audiobooks are actually reading. Um, you know what, though? Some people are just busy, and listening to an audiobook is an amazing choice to be able to get a little bit of an escape from the reality of work and family and life. And so for me, I love listening to audiobooks on my way to work. It's about 25 minutes there, 25 minutes back. Give me a month and I can listen to two audiobooks that I wouldn't have the time normally to read or listen to. Read. You know what I mean. The narrator that I want to highlight today, if you clicked on the thumbnail, you already know, is Andy Serkis, one of the most dynamic performances that made the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy such a powerful adaptation that it was back in the early 2000s. Most likely, if you're watching this, you love fantasy, and so you probably have seen The Lord of the Rings. I grew up reading The Chronicles of Narnia and other uh, young adult fantasy series, and for me, discovering Lord of the Rings was a huge, huge awakening of the love of fantasy in my life. In fact, I had to kind of sneakily uh, read Lord of the Rings because my mom was the biggest fan of a lot of books with magic and things like that. And so my rebellious phase <laughs> was reading Lord of the Rings. I mean, if that if my kids end up doing that, I'll be very happy. Uh, but for me, I fell in love with Lord of the Rings. The story, even though it was a little antiquated in the way that the narration and the writing style was, I know there's a huge uh, debate today about the place of Lord of the Rings in top tier lists of books. For, for me, Lord of the Rings will always be highly up there not just as a story, but when you take into account its impact on the genre and just the fact that I believe it still holds up. It's a little antiquated, but I study history. I have my master's degree in history. So obviously I don't mind reading a little bit of antiquated language. But for those of you who don't like reading language that is a little more outside of the norm of society, well, these audiobooks, I believe, will be a great way for you to enjoy this classic tale because Andy Serkis just takes the Lord of the Rings story and just performs it in a way that just surpasses any limitations of the age and of the genre, I believe. If you loved Andy Serkis, his role as Gollum slash Smeagol in Lord of the Rings, you probably are also aware that he played in King Kong, Rise of Planet of the Apes. Uh, he also was Snoke in the new Star Wars movies and then Claw in Marvel. Um, he has a lot of other narrative, uh, narrative voices and animated voice characters that he has done. I wish he would do more. Um, I love even small roles like he had in The Prestige by Christopher Nolan. He had a very small role that I actually really enjoyed as well. So I would love to see Andrew Serkis act more. And uh, hearing that this narration came out a few years ago for Lord of the Rings uh, just was absolutely amazing and I can't recommend it more. So what is it about Andy Serkis and his narration of Lord of the Rings that is just a next step up? For me, number one is his versatility. I mean, you're talking about a world in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit uh, describing Middle Earth in a way that is just very in depth, it's very nuanced and his voice just lends that uh, in so many ways, and describing places like Hobbiton, and uh, describing uh, Minas Tirith, describing the lands of Mordor, just all of the lands that J.R.R. Tolkien put down to page, I believe Andy Serkis does an amazing job relating them in a way that is just very powerful and very descriptive to the point where you're able to picture it. Even if you had never seen the movies, it just puts this, this emotion and this just iconic character to these places that just leap from the pages. And if you don't like reading these descriptions, his voice narration does an amazing job in that. It should come without any surprise that the voices of the characters 
just stand superior to many other audio narrators at this point. There are many audio narrators I listen to that they do an amazing job of different voices and of different characters and embodying their persona and, and personality within their voice. But Andy Serkis, he just goes above that. In fact, here, listen to some of these uh, character dialogues uh, from a couple of the books. Well, well, bless my beard, said Gandalf. Sam Gamgee, is it now? What may you be doing? Lord bless you, Mr. Gandalf, sir, said Sam. Nothing, leastways, I was just trimming the grass border under the window, if you follow me. He picked up his shears and exhibited them as evidence. I don't, said Gandalf grimly. It is some time since I last heard the sound of your shears. How long have you been eavesdropping? Eavesdropping, sir? No, I don't follow you. Begging your pardon, there ain't no eaves at Bag End, and that's a fact. Do not be hasty. That is my motto. But if I had seen you before I heard your voices, I liked them. Nice little voices. What do you mean? he said. Do you wish me a good morning, or mean that it is a good morning, whether I want it or not, or that you feel good this morning, or that it is a morning to be good on? Uh, all of them at once, <laughs> said Bilbo. And Dwarf doors are not made to be seen when shut, said Gimli. They are invisible, and their own makers cannot find them or open them if their secret is forgotten. It's always creeping, creeping. But that is an age and more ago, said Sam. The dead can't be really there. Is it some devilry hatched in the dark land? Who knows? Smeagol doesn't know, answered Gollum. You cannot reach them. Maybe those character voices don't match exactly what you picture in your head, but for me, they really embody the spirit of the characters as laid down by J.R.R. Tolkien. Another element of Andy Serkis' narration that I just love is that the establishment of the mood. When things are happy, it is happy and joyful, and his voice inflections just reflect that. And when there is a little more somber, deep character moment, uh, it also reflects that. Uh, when you think about some of the most somber, some of the most uh, descriptive character story-changing moments... This scene right here probably is what you think about. He paused and his eyes closed wearily. After a moment he spoke again. Farewell, Aragorn. Go to Minas Tirith and save my people. I have failed. No, said Aragorn, taking his hand and kissing his brow. You have conquered. Few have gained such a victory. Be at peace. Minas Tirith shall not fall. Boromir smiled. Which way did they go? Was Frodo there? said Aragorn. But Boromir did not speak again. Alas, said Aragorn, thus passes the heir of Denethor. Lord of the Tower of God, this is a bitter end. Now the company is all in ruin. It's just so beautiful. In all seriousness, Andy Serkis, the mood that he lays out in that scene just reflects everything from the movie. It reflects everything from memory and from my childhood reading these stories being impacted by the death of Boromir. And that's just one scene that is like that in Lord of the Rings. And Andy Serkis, his narration, does that all throughout this series. There is one area of Andy Serkis' narration of Lord of the Rings and of The Hobbit. And I believe he just narrated The Silmarillion as well. Haven't listened to that. But there's one area that he doesn't necessarily shine as much in. He's not horrible, but 
if you've read Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit um, and The Silmarillion, which I haven't listened to yet, you know that there are a lot of poems and songs. And Andy Serkis, while he's not the worst singer, uh, he is not the best at getting voices and emotion and thing across. Probably better than majority of people. But just listen to a couple of his things here that may not be exactly the best thing to listen to. And the feather starling down along under hill, shining in the sunlight, waiting on the doorstep for the cold starlight. Oh, water is fair that leaps on high in a fountain white beneath the sky. But never did fountain sound so sweet as splashing hot water with my feet. As I said, probably not one of the most cringy things on the internet, but in terms of audio performance and singing performance, probably not one of the best things either. So uh, there you go. It's not the best thing, not the worst, but it does get across elements of the story in a good, clean way. So it doesn't really detract that much. Much. The narration by Andy Serkis in these audiobooks in so many ways reminds me of my childhood listening to my dad and my brothers reading books to me since I was so much younger. Andy Serkis narration is just so fresh, relatable, and of such high quality with his versatility that I cannot recommend his narration enough. Five stars across the board. Well, 4.9? Each year at summer's end, I go to find them. You know what? That aside, five stars. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Hopefully this inspired you either to go listen to Andy Serkis, his narration of the audiobook, go read Lord of the Rings, or if you don't want to read Lord of the Rings, that is completely fine too, but you are definitely missing out. If you're interested at all in talking about more good, amazing stories, go ahead and check out my intro video up here just about why I started this channel and this one right here, which YouTube will recommend for my more recent videos. So have a wonderful day. God bless and we'll see you later.